So today we're going to look up the word or niger, okay? Because we got to remember that there are good connotations and bad connotations to certain words. But historic word, and it was not always used as a derogatory term or slang. So let's look up the word or niger. So it states in the English language, the word is an ethnic slur used against so-called black people, especially African-Americans, starting in the 1980s. References to nigger have been progressively replaced by the euphemisms, the N-word, notably in cases where nigger is mentioned but not directly used. In an instance of linguistic reappropriation, the term is also used casually and fraternally among African-Americans, most commonly in the form of nigger, whose spelling originated from the phonological system of African-American English. The word nigger, and spelled English nigger or niger, appeared in the 16th century as a adaptation of French nigre, itself from Spanish negro. They go back to the Latin adjective niger or nigger, meaning black. Okay, it was initially seen as a relatively neutral term, essentially synonymous with English word Negro. Okay, so now we're going to go to Acts chapter 13, verse 1. But I want to go back to the first uh, sentences the word or Niger, then spelled English or Niger, appeared in the 16th century. We know that the King James Version of the 1611 had the Apocrypha which means hidden, but during this time when they was translating the word, we understand why they use or niger. First missionary journey, Acts chapter 13, verse one. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called niger or nigger. Okay, because we know Niger means black or Negro. Okay, so let's read it again. Certain prophets and teachers, as well as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called niggers, meaning they were Negroid peoples. Okay, they were Hebrews. They were Shemitic. Okay. Strong's G thirty five twenty six. Niger. Niger. Say that again for the ones who don't study. Strong's G 3526. Niger. Niger. So there's a negative connotation and a bad connotation. But most of our people don't understand that, you know, there is good and bad. So most people associate the word nigger with the bad connotation. So now we're at the Oxford's language dictionary connotation, an idea or feeling that a word invokes in addition to its literal or primary meaning. The word discipline has unhappy connotations of punishment and repression, similar overtone, undertone, uh, undercurrent implication, hidden meaning, which is nigger or niger, secondary meanings which nigger has as well okay and there's other words associated with it what is an example of a connotation the word connotation is often used to describe the associations and emotions that come with a single word for example when someone says dog you might think of a cute little puppy or your adorable pet when someone says spider most people would immediately think of something creepy or scary also, when someone thinks they're also implying that in a derogatory term, that's what most modern people believe the word actually means. But that's not the case. So we're back at the Strong's Concordance outline of biblical use. Number one, or Niger equals black. OK, a surname of the prophet Simeon Strong's definition, nigger of Latin origin, black nigger, a Christian nigger, okay? And who were the Christians? The Christians were Hebrews, 
meaning they were the Israelites of the scriptures, point blank period. So now we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 31 and 32, because people don't understand what the New Testament is, which just means covenant. All Testament mean is covenant. The notion that it is the Jew versus the Christian. No, that's what they want you to believe. The Bible is a book of law, history and prophecy, along with a lot of metaphorical speech and so forth. But the house of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, and the house of Israel, that being the northern kingdom, which they called Gentiles of the New Testament. So let's read. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant or a new testament with the house of Israel, those being the Gentiles, the ones that worship Baal and other deities, and with the house of Judah, which were the Judeans, right? Not according to the covenant or testament that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out the land of Egypt. OK, which my covenant or testament they broke, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. So the bride is Israel, meaning the people. OK, so now we're at the etymology of the word nigger and it says nigger, Latin, black, dark. Sable, dusky. Then we have Negro, Spanish, Negre, French, Nigger, 1786. And we have Nigger, noun. So when you go into the Compact Bible Dictionary by Zondervan, it states Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negroes, I repeat, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Genesis 10, 6 through 20. Okay, emphasis that the Negroes are not of the Hermetic line. So what line are they from? So we're at the etymology of the word progenitor, noun, late 14th century, an ancestor in a direct line. Okay, from Anglo-French. Progenitor, mid 14th century, to old French, progenitor, 14th century, and directly from Latin, progenitor, ancestor, founder of a family. So now we're at Hosea 11 and 1. The Most High yearns over his people. When Israel, meaning the people, the descendants, the progeny, was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Okay, so the sons and daughters of the Most High are Israel, meaning the Negroes. Now we're at the strong concordance of Israel, age three, four, seven, eight. Outline of biblical usage. Number one, Israel equals God prevails. A, the second name of Jacob or Jacob given to him by the Most High after his wrestling with the angel at Pineal, like the Pineal gland, right? B, the name of the descendants and the nation of the descendants of Jacob, that being Israel. Number one, the name of the nation until the death of Solomon and the split. Number two, the name used and given to the northern kingdom, consisting of the ten tribes under Jeroboam. The southern kingdom was known as Judah. Okay, the name of the nation after the return from exile. So now we're at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Meaning you should be called everything under the sun, but your God a given name or your ethic group. So now we're at first Kings chapter nine, verse seven. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hollowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. So now we're at James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, or the Hamishiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. So this is a exclusive letter or epistle to the twelve tribes that are scattered and are called bywords and proverbs. What are those words? They were called niggers or nigers, right? And everything under the sun. 
So we have the word nigger now, 1786, earlier nigger, 1568, Scottish and Northern England dialect. Nigger or nigger from French negre, from Spanish negro, see negro. From the earliest usage, it was a term that carries with it all the obelique and contempt and rejection which whites have inflicted on blacks cited in Gower's 1965, probably Harold R. Isaacs. But as black African inferiority was at one time a near universal assumption in English speaking lands, the word in some cases could be used without deliberate insult. I repeat, could be used without deliberate insult. The good connotation and the bad connotation, right? That's why we have to look up the etymology of words to get the correct in a real historical meaning or the origin of where these words come from. Reading on, more sympathetic writers late 18th century and early 19th century seems to have used black now and after the American Civil War, colored person. It was also applied by English colonists to the dark-skinned native peoples in India, Australia, and Polynesia. Interesting, right? So the, the Indian people were called niggers as well as the Australians and the Polynesians. Hmm. Reading on, one hears the contemptuous term nigger still applied to natives by those who should know better, especially by youth who just come from home and somewhat intoxicated by sudden power. Samuel Smith, India, revisited in the Contemporary Review, July 1886. The reclamation of the word as a neutral or positive term in black culture, not universally regarded as a worthwhile enterprise. Often with a suggestion of soul or style is attested first in the U.S. South, later 1968 in the northern urban based black power movement. The variant nigga attested from 1827 as nigga from 1835 is found usually in situations where blacks use the word also compared nigra. So now we're at the Bible Encyclopedia and Dictionary Fawcett's Zondervan. So we got the word nigger or niger. Okay, they claim as surname of Simeon, second of the five teachers and prophets of the Antioch church. Acts 13 and 1 equals black, probably a African proselyte. Okay, so this is in theory. For he's associated with Lucius of Cyrene in Africa. His Hebrew name, Simeon, shows his Hebrew extraction. What does extraction mean? So we have the word extraction, Oxford Dictionary or Oxford Language. Number two, the ethnic origin of someone's family, a worker of Polish extraction. Okay, we have descent, ancestry, percentage, ancestors, family, lineage, line, line of descent. He was a Hebrew, right? He was of a Shemitic origin, race, origin, birth, genealogy, heredity, succession, stock, pedigree, blood, bloodline. Strain, roots, origins, forefathers, antecedents, and filiation. Okay. Okay. His Hebrew name, Simeon, shows his Hebrew bloodline. Or we can use origin, or we can use race, etc. Okay. And that's for a nigger. That's who he's from, the Shemitic line, the Hebrewic line. We're at the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Simeon, the second son of Jacob or Jacob by Leah, Genesis 29 and 33. He and his brother Levi massacred the Havites, if I'm pronouncing it right, living in Shechem because of an injury done to their sister Dina, Genesis 34, 24 through 31. The tribe of which Simeon, the son of Jacob, became the founder. Number three, an ancestor of Yahawashai, Luke 3 and 30. Number four, devout Jew or Judean who took the infant Yahawashai into his arms and praised the Most High, Luke 2 and 25 and 34. 
Simon Peter, Acts 15 and 14. See Peter 6, one of the Christian leaders in the church at Antioch, surname Niger or Niger, who set up apart Paul and Barnabas for their missionary work, Acts 13 and 1 and 2. So we see right here, surname Niger, right? One of the Christian leaders in the church at Antioch, surname Nigger. So let's go to J.A. Rogers to see what surnames, you know, were commonly associated with. Now we're at the book, Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. Page 52, Ancient Rome. America is the modern day Rome, Babylon, etc. Right here, surnames. Surnames at that time and much later often came from physical characteristics in place of birth. That's why you get the names Brown or Moore, Blackamore, etc. People from the river Nigger or Niger were called Niggers or Niger. For instance, therefore, it is not logical to assume that those with such names as Niger or Nigger, Fescus, after terms used for Negroes were passed on to their descendants, when the latter, by mixture, have become white, question mark. I shall later give abundant evidence of white families bearing names as Moore, Blackamore, Salachani, whose ancestors were inhospitably Negro. In fact, a Negro element ran through all the peoples of Asia Minor, Palestine, Assyria, Arabia, and along the Indian Ocean as far as Malaya. Okay. Now we're at page 57. It says, Many American Negroes are indistinguishable from Arabs. Hmm, I wonder why. So right here, here is what the Rashida Arabs actually look like, if I'm pronouncing that right. As we can see, these are um, Arabs, black, so-called black Arabs, people of color. And they're, you know, indistinguishable from American Negroes, you know, like the Bloods, the Crips, you know, they got on their attire. But right here we have another uh, black Arab, all three, indistinguishable from, you know, American Negroes, okay? They look just like the American Negroes, okay? Same thing down here, okay? We're not in one specific place or continent. Okay, right here, real Arabs. Okay, portrait of an Arab, uh, Horace Vernet, 1789 through 1863. Okay, right here, another Arab, an Arab prince, Rudolph Ernest, 1854 through 1932. Okay, Arab chieftain and his entourage, Adolf Scherer, eighteen twenty-eight through eighteen ninety-nine. Right, more pictures. Of Arab sage, Rudolf Ernest, eighteen fifty-four, nineteen thirty-two. Okay, these are pictures that you don't see in magazines or publications because they want you to think that the modern people in those lands are the original. Just like the little um, dispute about the movie uh, Queen Cleopatra, right? You know, they they don't want to uh, tell historical truths. They want to stick to the, you know, historical narrative, you know. History uh, of our subject. Now, the term would be interesting and worthy of study if it were only used as an insult. And if that were the only way in which it was used, it, it would still, it seems to me, warrant study. But it's even more interesting because that's not the only way it's used. Uh, nigger, or some people would say nigga, and some people make a big distinction between N-I-G-G-E-R and N-I-G-G-A, I'll be happy to talk about that distinction in later in our question and answer period. But nigger or nigga or, and by the way, nigger has been spelled all sorts of ways over its 400-year history. 
you know, N-I-G-G-U-H, N-I-G-G-O-R, uh, N-I-G-G-E-R. Um, but this word has been used in a wide variety of ways. And one way in which it's used uh, is as a term of affectionate salutation. Uh, I certainly have friends and members of my family, for that matter, who have embraced me uh, lovingly with the term nigger. Good to see you, my nigger. Now, that's intensely controversial. I know that. Many people abhor that, think that's a terrible thing to say. Uh, but as a sociological matter, uh, I think it's irrefutable that there are people who use the term as a uh, gesture of, uh, uh, of affection, as a symbol of uh, solidarity. Um, well, let me give a couple of examples. Ice-T says in one of his songs, I'm a nigger, not a colored man, or a black, or a negro, or an African American. Ice Cube, for his part, dubs himself the nigga you love to hate. And then there's Beanie Siegel, or Seigel, who promises, I'm a ride with my niggas, die with my niggas, get high with my niggas, split pies with my niggas, till my body gets hard, soul touch the sky, till my number gets cold and God shuts my eyes. And anybody who listens to uh, uh, many aspects of uh, hip-hop culture will be familiar with this use of the word nigger. And I talk about this use of the word nigger. Just briefly, um, you know, what explains that? Well, for some people, it's just habit. They've heard other people use the term in this way, and so they use it in this way. Uh, some people use the term in the way I just noted, advisedly. They are very self-consciously attempting to transform the meaning of the word, as have uh, many gay people uh, sought to transform the word, uh, the term queer. Um, in other words, there are some black people who have say, I, you know, we understand that this word nigger was meant to uh, oppress us. We understand that this word nigger has been thrown at us in an attempt to make us feel ashamed of ourselves. We understand that this word nigger has been thrown at us in an effort to strike fear in our hearts. But guess what? That campaign failed. It didn't work. We're not ashamed. We're not afraid. Uh, we have overcome. And one way of showing that is that we're going to use the word nigger in a very different way than uh, anti-black bigots meant for the word uh, to be used. Now, so that's, I, I think that's enough about the history uh, of, of the word. And this will be the end of the video, but I also wanted to touch on the name James. James means Jacobus or Jacob or Jacob. So it really should say the Holy Bible 1611 edition King Jacob or King Jacob virgin. Why? The Jacobites, right? Which were people of color. Okay. Or what you will call niggers. So let's read Jacobite, a partisans or adherent of James II, the so-called black king of England after he abdicated the throne and of his descendants, of course, opposer of the revolution in 1688 in favor of William and Mary. Number two, one of the set of Christians in Syria and Mesopotamia who hold that Yahawashai Christ had but one nature. Jacobite A, pertaining to the partisans of James II. So now we're at the Jacobite Glennings, meaning the descendants of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? From state manuscripts, short sketches of Jacobites, the transportations in 1745. And what do they always say? That the slaves built America or the indentured servants or, or the ones that were deported out of the British Isles. And how were they described? Swarthy, tawny, 
Reddy, Brown, etc. So now we're going to be reading from the book, The Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles, page 123. It says, had today's Negroes or niggers avoided the process of being brainwashed concerning his own history, he would have understood that over three millenniums ago, the so-called white man was under the black man's supremacy or rulership and addressed the black man as master, my lord, sir, and imperial, his majesty. The Bible phrases which indicates that slaves should obey their masters were first deceivingly applied to the peasant whites by their black masters along with other scriptures. Thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal or lie, nor bear arms for self-defense. These same misrepresented tactics were deceptively practiced upon the Negro prior and after the African slave trade, a process used to perpetuate apartheid, which was invented by the black masters of Europe. It was during the French Revolution of A.D. 1789 that ended the black power dominance in Europe. The oppressed so-called whites took the law in their own hands and reversed the cruel art of apartheid to punish the very blacks who invented its use. There are many royal black families who remained in power by whitening themselves and their children to soften the rage of the white revolutionists, a practice that continues to this day. It is plainly understood that a people who lack knowledge of themselves become a burden to themselves and human progress, as we can see with the unemployment rate of so-called blacks in the Americas. We haven't been taught our correct history. Most world leaders and academians are well aware of a once African supremacy of Europe. Nevertheless, to protect their honor, pride and pseudo ethnocentric views, their beliefs are systematically kept from the public. The overall truth is that the African forefathers of the universe, whether called a nigger or niger, negro or more, ingeniously pioneered the world from the stone age to the ultra structure of modern civilization. When Ethiopia and Egypt were at the peak of their cultural development, Europe was a wilderness. London, Paris, Athens, and Rome were swamplands and vacant sites. Okay. At the bottom, it says there were no lamps in London or even paved roads in France, Greece, and Italy. 96% of all European and American filmmaking regarding a white European rule is a fake. What the world perceives as an ancient white European civilization was in reality Africoid or Negroid. Okay. The French essays and moralist John de la Brie, 1645 through 1696, commented, the extract contrary of what is generally believed is often the truth. Now I'm going to read the bottom of page 123. Blacks in Hollywood or Hollyweird and other movie industries continue to whiten themselves to win the favor of whites. The Africans constructed huge European castles and pioneered the idea of building great churches and academies by which the modern world is built. The Negro Africans educated the world in science and writing. They mastered the seven arts of civilization. And like I said, nothing recessive can be a progenitor of different shades or hues of melanin and so forth. But the word nigger, niger, okay, more, you know, it's all, it's all one and the same. But when we go further back in history, we were called Israelites and different tribes or whatnot. But peace.